I used to see this guy on the bus every morning back when I used to work at a coffee shop. He would always sit at the front of the bus, and when I would get on, I would sometimes fumble a bit because I never had an easy time trying to get my dollar bill into the fare machine. Anyway, this guy would watch me, close his eyes, and shake his head in disgust, as I was clearly the biggest moron who ever walked the earth. At first he made me kind of nervous, but after a while I realized that he didn't get irritated at just me. Pretty much everyone that got on seemed to displease him in some way. I got kind of fascinated after a while watching him scowl and shudder at the total incompetence of all of his fellow human beings. One morning I fell asleep and had a dream about how much better and more efficient the world was going to be after this guy became king and supreme leader of the planet, but then I woke up after a minute so I didn't find out how everything turned out. This next person I used to see on the bus that I took home when I was in college. There was usually almost no one on that route, so I would sit in the back so I could space out and look out the window. One day I noticed that there was this guy who looked like this staring at me. I did my best to ignore him, but it totally didn't work, and he just kept on staring at me. The next day, the same guy got on, sat down, and out of his backpack pulled out this ginormous stack of hardcore gay pornography. For the rest of the bus ride, he would look at the porn, and then look at me, and then back at the porn, and then back at me again. The day after that, I brought a little reading material of my own for the bus ride, just as a way of saying, no offense dude, but you're barking up the wrong tree. But he wasn't on the bus that day, and I never saw him again. The only other person on there was drunk as a lord, so I got to read the magazine anyway. This next guy was your average everyday sports fanatic who was eager to start a conversation about football with anyone with an earshot. After a moment of listening to him talk, though, it became apparent that he didn't actually pronounce the letters L or R very well. There is, of course, no shame in that, but I was surprised that he didn't take this into account when choosing his vocabulary. It went like this. My favorite team is the Dallas Cowboys, so recently I flew down to Texas, Arlington to be precise. You see, the Cowboys play in an arena with a retractable wolf. A retractable wolf is a brilliant development. Wayne or shine, it allows one to be indifferent to the weather. You should fly down to Arlington, too, to see the Cowboys. It's really, really worthwhile. Scout's honor, I swear I am not making this up. This last guy I would see periodically on my way to Harvard Square. He would get on the subway during rush hour armed only with a boombox, a huge, huge smile, and a pair of shorts that started late and ended early. He would then start blasting that 80s song, You Spin Me Right Round, and dance and shake his ass like there was no tomorrow. Now whether or not people were laughing at him or laughing with him, I don't really know, but I'm fairly certain that this made no difference to him. I will say, though, that if you consider it a noble deed to make other people smile, then this guy did a beautiful job. Sometimes I wonder how many different people and faces I have seen while riding on public transportation. Most of them you just see for 10 or 15 minutes, and then they get off, and you forget them completely. But today on my way home, I took a seat in the back, and I started to think, I wonder if I'm doing anything unintentionally outlandish right now at this precise moment that's going to cause anyone to remember me.